I don't know if you have looked into the manuscripts of the Bible. I wouldn't blame you if you haven't because this is not something everyone goes into. But the, the earliest manuscripts of the New Testament that we have today, there are none from the first century. Zero manuscripts. Yeah? From the second century, it's just a fragment. Just a fragment, like a credit card size fragment. And from third and fourth, we have more, but not the entire Bible, not the entire New Testament. According to one New Testament scholar, it's called Doc, Dr. Bart Ehrman, he says 94% of the New Testament is from the ninth century or beyond. But one thing is confirmed by all scholars, including Christian scholars, that from the first century, you have nothing, zero manuscripts. So you don't have the oral tradition of memorization, you don't have the manuscripts, you don't have the chain of uh, 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 transmission. So how can you believe what Jesus said in the first century is exactly as it has been recorded in the New Testament you hold in your hand? If you don't have manuscripts, how will you... From the first century? Maybe they didn't find it in the first century, but it took to night to find it. Say again? Maybe they didn't have it in the, the first century, but in the ninth century they actually found it. Yeah, but ninth century is 900 years after Jesus. Can you believe that? 900 years after Jesus, you have a gap of nearly a thousand years. How will you confirm what Jesus said in the first century based on documentation from the ninth century? We are talking about nearly a thousand years of gap. And the same with the Old Testament, do you know? The, the earliest manuscript of the Old Testament is from the Dead Sea Scrolls, I believe, which date to about 1200, 1200 years after Moses more than a thousand years after after Moses. Now you got a gap of nearly a thousand years in the case of Jesus and more than a thousand years in the case of Moses. There is no way this Bible that you hold in your hand can be confirmed what Moses said and what Jesus said during that time. No one will say that this is a true copy of the original without looking at the original. Yeah? Yeah. So Quran, we have two, two modes of transmission. One is oral, which is the primary mode. So, for example, when when Prophet Muhammad he, uh, he he received the message of revelation from Allah through the angel Gabriel or Jibril Ali Salam, as it's known in Arabic. Yes, he memorized that, and then he would convey that message of the Quran to his companions who would A, memorize it, B, record it as well in writing. So we have two modes of preservation. And not only this was recorded, which we actually have copies of today from the first century of Hijra, yes, from the first century of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, but we also have this tradition, which is the primary mode of preservation, the oral tradition of memorization of the Quran. So if I go from here to say South America today, yes, and I ask a person to recite Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran, yes, he will recite it exactly as someone who would recite it in England. So that is the mode of preservation orally, and I've already shown you the mode of preservation through manuscript. So in Bir Birmingham uh, University, we have something called the Birmingham manuscript of the Quran, which is like um, carbon dated from the period of the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Yes, there's a range of like uh, 50 years or something. So within a very close proximity, we have actual evidence of hard evidence of the manuscripts of the Quran. And that manuscript, when you read it, it is exactly as the Quran that I would be holding in my hand today. That is the level of, uh, what do you say, uh, of securing the preservation of the Quran. And you know what is the most important level of preservation, of securing the preservation of the Quran? Yes? It's where Allah Himself says in the Quran that He will preserve it. So if you open chapter 15, verse number 9, where He says, it is we who have revealed the zikr, which is the Quran, and it is we who will preserve it, safeguard it. 
So Allah himself guarantees the preservation because it, it is the last message to the last messenger and there's going to be no more messengers to come after him, no more prophets to come after him to correct. You know what happened before whenever, for example, when the Old Testament got corrupted and the Pharisees used to mispronounce it and misinterpret uh, it? Yes, Jesus came along and he taught the people the correct message of Moses, the correct message of the Torah, because he knew it. So there was always this safety net of the next prophet to come and correct if anything was uh, misinterpreted or misrepresented by the previous uh, uh, by, by the previous generation. So the next prophet would come and correct them. But because there are no more messengers and prophets to come after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is Khatim al Anbiya, who is the seal of the prophets, that means the last prophet, Allah Himself took it upon Him, upon him to preserve the message of the Quran. And that is the reason we have today this several million people today. Yes, some say 17 or 18 million people today have memorized, committed the Quran entirely to memory. Yes, so regardless of what people like David Wood and Hatun and all destroy the Quran, they can destroy all the Qurans, they can burn all the Qurans in the world. But there'll be millions of people who have it in the heart, which they'll never be able to get rid of.